Uh, so, guys, thank you very much uh, for the to the organizers for the invitation. I will talk about cavity optomagnonics. You will see I changed a little bit the title of my talk. I will be focusing on the coupling of uh, magnons to photons in the optical regime. Uh, so we are a research group at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Light in Erlangen, and this is us, and we are a theory group who are interested in uh, hybrid quantum systems, and we've been working a lot on hybrid quantum systems based on magnetic elements. I put some examples here of the relevant systems that have been studied nowadays, for example, microwave cavities with an embedded magnetic element, also exploring coupling to different degrees of freedom, such as mechanical ones. Uh, but in this talk, I will be concentrating, as I said, on opto-magnetic uh, uh, magnetic systems, which are, uh, one can consider them like um, the, the probably most uh, challenging ones. So we want to couple uh, magnets uh, to photons. Usually this coupling is uh, very weak. So this is where the cavity enters. It serves to enhance and spin photon interaction, but not only that, it also introduces a new effects, so dynamical effects such as frequency shifts, induced dissipation, etc. And we can think in terms of can we use the light to control uh, the magnet, so the dynamics of uh, the mag of the magnets. Um, so this is uh, the uh, first topic that I will deal into, so optically induced spin dynamics, then I will deal a bit how to well enhance uh, further the coupling between magnets and photons by using uh, optomagnetic crystals, and then I will talk briefly about our new results on antiferromagnetic uh, optomagnetics. So let's start with um, kind of an earlier uh, work of us. Uh, optical induced spin dynamics. And if we want to think in terms of, um, so how light interacts with magnetic matter, we can think uh, in terms of the classical Faraday effect where the light goes through a magnetized material and it rotates uh, its plane of polarization. The amount it rotates, it's proportional to the Faraday uh, rotation constant of the material or Faraday constant. And this can be encapsulated in the permittivity of the material, which uh, acquires uh, a correction, which is linear in the magnetization of the material, anti-symmetric and uh, imaginary. And this F that you see here is basically just proportional to the Faraday rotation. So we can in, um, introduce this permittivity in uh, the electromagnetic energy of the system. And we will see that we obtain a correction which couples the magnetization density in the sample with uh, what is called the optical spin density. So here, this is the electric optical field and in the complex representation. And this E star cross E is simply, so if I consider, for example, circularly polarized light, this will give me a vector that points perpendicular to the plane of polarization. So I can proceed phenomenologically to quantize this interaction term. So from the quadratic part in the electric fields, I will obtain two photon operators or two photon processes. And uh, from the magnetization, I will get uh, spin operators. Now we are interested in coupling to uh, the, the excitations of to the fluctuations of the magnetization. So we are thinking in terms of coupling to magnon modes. And the simplest mode to consider is uh, the Kittel mode, so that we're all spins uh, processing phase. So I can do a macro spin approximation. Um, <clears throat> the frequency of, of these modes are usually in the gigahertz uh, regime. And how this can be implemented in a cavity setup was introduced or was uh, done in these uh, seminal experiments in 2016. So what you see here is a very well, very nicely polished sphere of yttrium iron garnet, a ferrimagnetic insulator, which is uh, transparent in the infrared. The light enters here through a nanofiber, which is couple, uh, coupled evanescently to, to the sphere. And then it enters, it will spend a while inside of the material. And when it comes out, it uh, contains information of the coupling of the light with the photons. And more precisely, what they measure is um, side bands at uh, the magnum frequency. So we can take uh, this, uh, this model and simplify it into a, a toy model in which uh, we want to study 
the spin, uh, the optical induced spin dynamics. So we consider a system which is magnetized in the set direction. And since we want to couple to the fluctuations of the magnetization, we consider one optical mode with, us on, with an optical spin density pointing along X. So we obtain a coupling term, which is of this kind. So the number, the photon number operator couples to the X component of the spin. And I can calculate the coupling from the expression that I showed you before. And in the, in the optimal case in which um, photon and magnon modes overlap um, ideally or optimally, I get uh, this result. So uh, the coupling is proportional to the Faraday rotation of the material and inversely proportional uh, to the number of spins or to, to the magnetic volume. So as usual, there is an enhancement as we go to um, um, smaller volumes of the cavity. So <clears throat> now uh, we add this coupling term with two, uh, to the free Hamiltonians of the photon in the rotating frame. So this here is the detuning, which is uh, the laser, the driving laser minus uh, the cavity, um, a free precession of the spin with frequency uh, omega and the coupling that we have already seen. And we also add magnon and cavity decay rates for the moment that we can consider that this uh, magnon decay rate is, um, is small compared to what we will have in, in the cavity from the cavity. So now we can uh, start to think how to study the dynamics of, of the system and one can, so one can write the equations of motion and solve them in a kind of quite illuminating um, regime in which, uh, which is the fast cavity limit. So um, where the photons are fast, so they don't spend too much time in the cavity. And we will also treat just the, the dynamic, uh, the classical dynamics. So we consider uh, expectation values on uh, coherent uh, states. And in this, um, in this regime, we can integrate out the light field by doing an adiabatic um, approximation. Uh, and what we get as an effective equation of motion for the spin is something that looks like this, so like an effective Landau, so like an uh, Landau Lipschitz uh, Gilbert equation of motion, where uh, we have uh, to the external field there will be an added term, which is an optically induced magnetic field, which will cause well a little bit of a tilt of the of the original field and also frequency shift of um, of the man of um, the Kittel mode precession. And also interesting, we get a damping term, which has a shape which is uh, reminiscent of uh, Gilbert damping in magnetic systems. This is optically induced. And as you see, um, well, these both quantities are tunable by the external laser drive, but the optical, uh, the optically induced damping can change sign. So if we now do, to take a look at one example, at the blue detune case. So we see that, so we are basically pumping energy into the system and the um, optical induced dissipation can change. That sign can be negative and this, so one of the consequences that this can have is that light induced magnetic switching with, where the original equilibrium um, position of the magnetization is uh, inverted. So there is a kind of a population inversion. This is probably um, hard to realize in a solid state uh, system, but it has been uh, seen. So the same kind of, of, of um, magnetic switching has been realized in cold atoms uh, in the group of uh, Stamper Kern a couple of years ago, where exactly the same uh, Hamiltonian is, um, is present. And so <clears throat> if we go beyond, uh, beyond this fast cavity limit, once it's a very rich uh, nonlinear dynamics of the system, even including chaos, also uh, one can obtain limit cycle dynamics, which, um, which is interesting from the point of view, for example, for um, magnum lacing. But uh, there is an issue and that, uh, um, that is that the state of the art, uh, the experimental state of the art of, of the coupling is uh, small. However, if one uh, takes the expression that I showed you before, then the theoretical limit for this coupling is uh, much larger to what it is uh, observed. The issue 
in the experimental setups is the overlap of the modes, which is really suboptimal. So this diminishes the coupling. And also that the systems are quite large. So one really wants to go, uh, want to go to um, micron to the diffraction limit to confine and the light. So let me show you now um, our efforts to tackle this problem, which uh, we put forward, for which we put forward the concept of optomagnetic crystals, with a, which are um, periodic structures carved in um, um, magnetic dielectrics with, uh, with a defect, which could serve to localize magnon and optical modes. So for this, uh, we need to go back to the magneto-optical coupling, but now allow for the magnetization fluctuations, so to, to preserve the spatial and distribution of the magnetization fluctuations. And in this case, we need to consider a small fluctuations so that we can uh, actually represent or quantize these fluctuations in terms of bosonic operators. So where I have here, uh, these Bs are going to create and annihilate a magnon in mode gamma, and this will give me the, the, the respective mode function of the magnon mode. This is analogous to what we, does, uh, we do <laughs> with uh, optical fields in which we have photon operators A creating and annihilating magnons in mode A, uh, photons, sorry, in mode beta, uh, and then the, the mode function is given by the amplitude of, of the electric field. So we can put now all this together again to obtain a coupling Hamiltonian in uh, the spin wave limit. So you see now uh, we can uh, scatter a photon from mode beta to alpha, either by emitting or absorbing a, a magnon. And the coupling strength is given by this G, which contains the information of the overlaps of the, of the overlap of the modes. So this is basically uh, cavity enhanced uh, Brulein scattering. So now we can look at this expression, and although it seems quite uh, simple, this is not the case to calculate it uh, for, 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 a, uh, for a system. And in particular, uh, for um, systems that are patterned at the micro scale due to the complexity of both the ground state and the magnon, um, uh, ground state magnetization and the magnon modes corresponding uh, to the structure. So in general, one has to resort to micromagnetic simulations. This is uh, what we did, and we combined them with finite element simulations for the optics to um, calculate these couplings and also to try to optimize uh, the system. So we also need to take into consideration that now we are working with a periodic structure. So we'll have uh, photonic bands and magnetic bands. So we are looking for a magnon mode and a photon mode, which are localized at the mode, which fall in the, in the gap of the band, and that they have the right symmetry so that when I calculate this integral over the, the whole space, then I can obtain large values of the coupling. We, will, uh, we were successful with, even with this very uh, simple uh, geometry to find uh, these modes, but looking, by looking at the symmetry, so you can see that, uh, so if we now calculate uh, the coupling strength, you can reach the range of kilohertz regime that would be quite high to would, uh, compared to what is uh, currently um, done uh, experimentally or realizable experimentally. Uh, we also play around uh, with a little bit of optimization of this very simple uh, geometry. However, um, this is still quite lossy uh, for the optical mode. So it's not really, um, I would say it's not the ideal structure, but it shows and uh, that it's so the so this design as at the micro scale can be um, um, good in terms of, um, um, of optimization of the or enhancement of the coupling. So in the last uh, minutes, how, how much time do I have? I would say yeah, four minutes or so would be good. Okay, so in the last then uh, five minutes, <laughs> so four to five minutes, let me tell you uh, briefly about generalizing these concepts uh, to uh, to antiferromagnets. And in this case, we consider okay, we so that we ask ourselves the question, okay, what happens if in this if we have an antiferromagnetic insulator? So we treated a very simple case of uh, 
collinear antiferromagnet of a rhodile structure with a, a bipartite lattice, which will have two magnet branches, alpha and beta. And so we have the magnetic Hamiltonian, which will have the usual exchange term and applied magnetic field. And we also allow for um, easy and hard axis and isotropies. And the question is how this, uh, the magnon modes would couple to a cavity optical field. So now we can proceed in a similar um, phenomenological approach of taking the, the permittivity, the, in this case, the correction of uh, the permittivity um, due to the magnetization. But see now I write it in terms, I, I, I specifically write the, the um, spatial index and also this tensor now will have information on the lattice, uh, the lattice structure. So if I take now this magnet optical coupling and I quantize it, and uh, I also need to go to the, from the sub lattice uh, to the collective modes of the Hamilton, of the antiferromagnet, so this alpha and beta magnon modes, I will obtain a coupling in the case in which I have only one photon mode uh, like I had before. So it's the G that I showed you before, the photon number operator. And in this case, I will have a coupling to the two magnon branches, which has an extra factor. This, uh, we can call it the Bogolyubo factor, which has the information on the Bogolyubo transformation, but also on the magneto-optical asymmetry between the sub lattices, for example, so for nickel oxide, this is zero. And for um, some um, well-known antiferromagnets, it can be in, in the range of 0 0.01. And now if we look at how uh, these Bogolyubo factors behave, uh, say as a function of magnetic field and of uh, any sort of asymmetry, we see, for example, and this is for uh, this G alpha. So we see um, that for zero magnetic field, for example, in the absence of asymmetry, uh, the coupling would be zero. So that this mode is a dark, so the alpha mode is a dark mode, but we can turn on the coupling by, uh, by um, turning on the magnetic field. So which is nice, it gives a knob to, um, to control the coupling. Now, what is disappointing are the numbers here. So you see that this is always less than one. So um, this will always tend to reduce the, the, the coupling except if one can find a, a material in which this um, magneto-optical asymmetry is larger, in which one could find um, cup, so an enhancement of the coupling. Now, just let me briefly tell you uh, one example of dynamical response in the strong coupling regime. I should make a distinction here. So it's called here strong coupling regime. The, the regime in which the coupling is larger than the dissipation channels in the system. So if we look at, for example, at reddit-tuned um, driving in this coupling regime, so we, now we have two magnon modes that are interacting with one cavity mode, which will introduce um, interaction between the magnon modes, and it leads to some uh, counterintuitive uh, behavior. For example, if we look at the effect on the magnon line width, we will see that in general, one would expect an enhancement of the line width, so at more damping, but there are the values of the detuning uh, for which one finds amplification for one of the modes. So this could be quite an interesting regime to explore. So let me just flash as an, um, a, as an, a final thought, if you want. Uh, so we, um, we used so far, um, or we consider so far just one magnon uh, processes, but actually in antiferromagnets, uh, two magnon processes are usually dominant. So we need to consider higher order uh, terms in uh, the correction to the permittivity. And this will uh, give a rise to a Hamiltonian in which we have the photons in the cavity, which can also uh, generate uh, magnon so this is kind of a true, uh, true magnon um, stimulated Riemann scattering. Uh, so we are in investigating the dynamics of, of this uh, generation of magnon pairs uh, in, in, with the, together with the physics of the cavity physics. And, uh, but let me, as a final remark, um, tell you or um, do a small advertising, which is not in uh, in a cavity regime, but it has to do with these um, two 
magnon stimulated Raman scattering, and which is uh, a path for an all optical generation of antiferromagnetic uh, magnon currents in uh, two dimensional antiferromagnets. And this is uh, via the magnon circular photogalvanic effect. This is a very recent work in collaboration with a group of Michel Sentev in Hamburg. And so what we found is that uh, indeed these, uh, this kind of driving can uh, generate directed magnet currents. This uh, can be controlled by the polarization and the angle of incidence of the light. And it should be measurable by uh, the inverse spin hole effect. Um, and, well, and <laughs> I should be finishing. So I just uh, tell you that, okay, the, the, the characteristics of the current that we find is in, in agreement with what one would expect from the symmetries of the system and with one expects, expects from circular photogalvanic effect. And if you're interested, uh, I refer you to, to our new uh, preprint uh, here. So thank you very much for your attention. And I leave you with a, a short outlook and I am available for questions.